technology fit? Why is it better than something else? And how did they get the physician to truly understand that? And in my view, and this is my last slide, where we are moving, and this is not necessarily your job, this is more my job, thinking on the clinical delivery side and your job uh, at Stanford, um, we need to start developing our clinical programs so that they are more understandable and orderly in terms of their decision treat process. We need to give our clinicians the tools to have advanced clinical decision support so they understand where they are in that decision tree. Wherever there is a personalized medicine diagnostic, it ought to be available at that point in the decision tree to see does that personalized medicine diagnostic give a better idea for a companion diagnostic, for a targeted therapy. And then once the therapy is selected, what is the likelihood of an adverse outcome? Let's look at that more formally. Uh, and uh, what is the understanding of what the prognosis is and how we're going to track? So let me end by saying that the, the dialectic, the direction of clinical practice is not here yet. But the purpose of this session is to show you, number one, what does the market look like in some of the more innovative clinical delivery systems? And I assure you that at Duke, we have a number of programs in clinical redesign that are dedicated to getting our workflows to look this way. It's not here yet, but it's moving that way. But what I felt that was a crying need in our uh, field is a better understanding of the market from the market side. What does it look like? What do the early innovators look like? And those that are selling into this market, what is the experiences that they have in trying to penetrate this particular market? So I'm now going to have the rest of the uh, presenters who are gonna try to fill in some of these blanks. And at the end, if there is enough time, we will uh, summarize. Thank you very much.